Hello everyone, my name is Quan, and today I'll be talking about our work on the measurement of a new way of tracking practice that uses JavaScript accessible first party cookies. So the first question is, why do we want to study this topic? Well, as we all know, uh, the web has traditionally been very permissive towards third party cookies, and this permissiveness has uh, given rise to privacy abuses. So consider, for example, an app network that serves contents on multiple websites. So in such scenarios, uh, using third party cookies, the same app network will be able to piece together the user's activities on all of those websites. And this is actually a very well-known uh, privacy risk that's introduced by third-party cookies. So because of this, uh, all major browsers of today offer their users the option to block third-party cookies. And more recently, we have also seen more advanced efforts coming out of browsers such as Safari that implements ITP or intelligent tracking prevention. So what this does is that uh, it essentially uses machine learning based techniques to automatically classify whether a domain is likely to be a tracker domain. And if so, it blocks cookies being set for those domains. So all of these efforts are nice, uh, but it, uh, when it comes to web tracking, we can expect to see an arms race. So basically the web trackers are going to continuously adapt to the privacy enhancing measures taken by browser vendors. And where this concerns uh, cookie-based tracking is the observation that in today's web, uh, third-party JavaScript code uh, is everywhere. So for example, in any website you go to visit uh, today is going to contain third-party JavaScript libraries that uh, are provided by origins, which are all different from the website that you visit. And all of these uh, third-party code, they actually execute in this uh, first-party context. So using this privilege, the third-party code can then uh, set cookies as first-party, which are not uh, affected by the browser's policies with regard to uh, blocking of third-party cookies. So in the rest of this work, uh, for convenience, we are going to refer to such uh, first party cookies, which are set by third party JavaScript code as external cookies. And then of course, uh, since the JavaScript code has uh, network access, it can then uh, later read back the external cookies, which were previously set and then diffuse them over the network. So the privacy implications that arise out of the third party's uh, JavaScript code's ability uh, to use external cookies has not been studied by previous work. So in this work, we will be trying to fill this gap. So to summarize, uh, the goals of this work are twofold. So first of all, we want to be able to have a tool that will allow us to understand the prevalence of external cookies on the current web and whether or not they are being used for tracking purposes. And secondly, we also want to uh, use this tool to understand the relationships among the entities that engaged in uh, this type of tracking. But to achieve these goals, uh, we first need to address a few challenges. So the first challenge is to be able to differentiate external cookies from other types of first party cookie, uh, cookies. And such differentiation cannot rely on observing the network traffic uh, because by definition, external cookies are not vis uh, visible at the network layer. Secondly, we also need to be able to uh, track the complete information flow of the JavaScript code. Uh, this is because, uh, for example, the JavaScript code might be uh, applying transformations uh, such as encryption before uh, diffusing the value of the cookies over the network. So to cover this aspect, uh, we leverage our previous work, Mystique, which implemented dynamic tent tracking for the Chromium browser. But for this work, we also need to implement additional machineries on top of Mystique, which I will talk uh, more about in the following. And finally, we also need to have a way to uh, automatically reason about the results. Uh, this is because we cannot rely on manual analysis of all of the JavaScript code we encounter. And then this is because uh, most of them are likely to be obfuscated to a certain degree uh, in order to deter uh, manual analysis. Now, uh, as I just mentioned, since we are using dynamic tent tracking for our analysis, uh, we first need to define the tent source. And the best way to do this uh, is to tent the external cookies when they are being set. Doing so will also uh, allow us to differentiate them from other first party cookies, which uh, as you recall, is one of the challenges we have to address. So to do this, uh, we essentially rely on interposing on a JavaScript interface to the cookie storage of a website. And to the best of our knowledge, the only such interface that JavaScript has is the DOM property document.cookie. 
So whenever this property is being written to, uh, it's going to update the cookies of the website. And therefore to interpose on this interface, uh, we first need to instrument the right accesses. And the way we do this is to modify the Chromium browser so that when a document a cookie is being written to uh, by third party JavaScript code, we record the uh, external cookie that is being set by putting it into a, a global hash table that is keyed on both the cookie's name uh, and the domain on which the cookie is set. So now having this information, we can then also go ahead and uh, instrument the read accesses from this property. So whenever a document, the, pop, uh, the cookie is being uh, read, it's going to return in a single string that concatenates together all of the cookies of the website. So whenever uh, this string contains one of the external cookies, which we have recorded uh, previously, we need to attend the uh, stream being returned. But one problem here, as you can already see, is that uh, the return stream might also contain other first party cookies, which are not external cookies. So this will lead to over tenting and this over tenting will result in false positives. So this is why we also need to implement additional features on top of Mystique. And in particular, we want to be able to tell for a, uh, a given string uh, exactly which bytes are tented. So we accomplish this by uh, associating a Boolean array with a string if and only if it is partially tented. And then we make sure to propagate this information across our common functions as well as regular expression operations. So that addresses the first two uh, challenges, but we still need to address the final challenge of being able to automatically reason about the results. And there are uh, two, uh, two parts to this challenge. So the first part is to be able to uh, automatically uh, tell whenever uh, the value of a cookie contains a tracking ID. And the second part is to be able to automatically uh, deduce relationships among the domains uh, engaged in external cookie-based tracking. So we need to address the first part of the challenge uh, because not all of the cookies are going to contain tracking IDs. So for example, we frequently see uh, cookie values which are just uh, Boolean flags. We also observe uh, cookie values that contain the user's language, uh, geolocation, time zone, and timestamps. So these are all just uh, cost grant information and they cannot be used to uniquely identify the user. We note that uh, this classification is in agreement with previous works. Now for our purpose, uh, we implement our tracking ID detection algorithm uh, on top of a previous work. Now for the second part of our challenge, uh, we need to address it because we want to uh, identify relationships among the domains. And there are two types of domains we want to uh, we want to know about. So the first type of domain is the source domain. So these are the domains that host the scripts that are uh, responsible for initially setting the cookies. While the sync domains are the domains that uh, receive information uh, that are derived from those cookies. But the main problem here is that currently Mystique only implements monochrome tent. Uh, so basically, whenever a tented value triggers one of the tent things, we do not have information to allow us to easily tell which one of the external cookies uh, it is derived from. So to solve this uh, issue, uh, we implement a heuristic that try to match the values reaching the tent things against the uh, cookies which we have detected to be containing uh, tracking IDs. So the heuristic is going to try to do a bunch of things. But the main point here is that um, by matching the two types of values against each other, uh, we, we, we can identify relationships that would otherwise not be available to us. So we applied our system to crowding the Alexa top 10K websites. And we found that the uh, external cookies are already being widely used. Uh, so next, we also try to count the number of unique external cookies uh, using uh, the uniqueness uh, criteria, which uh, considers both the source domain of the cookie as well as the name of the cookie. So in total, we found uh, 26.6 thousand uh, unique external cookies. So in the following, uh, we will be trying to classify each one of these cookies and provide a taxonomy. So for our taxonomy, uh, the first thing we did was to try to see uh, how many of th these cookies are session cookies versus non-session cookies. So the session cookies are basically going to be uh, deleted by the browser when the user closes the current browsing session. So as a result, uh, we do not consider such cookies to be pers persistent enough uh, to track the users. So we do not uh, classify them uh, further. 
Now for the non-session co cookies, uh, we uh, classify them using the tracking ID detection algorithm, uh, which we mentioned earlier. So uh, we found that the, the first thing we found was that uh, 40, about 4,200 or 32% of all the non-session cookies uh, contain tracking IDs. And most importantly, uh, we found that nearly 40% of the ID containing cookies, which we identified, are uh, set by uh, scripts that currently easy list and easy privacy uh, fail to block. So in a table here, we uh, show the rest of the categories in our taxonomy, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into uh, the details of each one of these. And the next thing we want to find out uh, are basically the cases uh, where the cookies are shared cross domain. So these are cases where basically the uh, sync domain uh, is different from both the source domain and the domain on which the cookie is set. And in the figure here, we have one such example. So in this figure, uh, the sync domain is uh, at network.com and it is different from both the source domain, which is tracker.com and the cookie domain, which is uh, example.com. So to find such cases, uh, we applied our heuristic to match against all of the ID containing cookies, which we uh, found in the previous step. So our heuristics was able to match uh, 3,300 or 77% uh, of all the ID containing cookies. And out of these uh, 3,300, we found uh, 2,400 that are engaged in cases of cross-domain cookie sharing. And we refer to these 2,400 uh, as the shared cookies. Now in the figure here, uh, we try to show the overall relationship among the domains engaged in cross-domain cookie sharing. And the way to read the figures here is basically uh, the size of a node corresponds to the overall degree of that node, uh, while the color of the node corresponds to either uh, the number of incoming edges or the number of outgoing edges from that node. So uh, from these two figures, we can easily see the top players uh, engaged in cross-domain cookie sharing. And then in this table, we try to zoom in a little bit on some of the top players. Um, but here, instead of ranking the source domain according to the number of outgoing edges, uh, we rank them according to the number of websites out of the top 10K, where we observe one, one of their external cookies being shared uh, across domain. Also in this table, uh, for each one of the source domain, uh, we show their uh, top cookie that is uh, being uh, shared across domain in the most number of websites. And finally, on the right-hand side of the table here, uh, we show sample value for the top cookies. Uh, so the point here is that uh, from the sample values, we can uh, easily see that they indeed contain information that can be used to uniquely identify the user. And lastly, I want to talk about some of the case studies we found by manually examining some of the results we get. Uh, so the first case study is uh, Adobe Demdex. So this is a case where um, a script loaded from demdex.net uh, reads the Google Analytics cookie and sends it back to itself. Uh, we manually confirm that this is indeed what's happening by looking at the source code of the script. Uh, but we cannot confirm whether this is a policy of violation against Google uh, because we do not know whether there is uh, information sharing agreement between the two parties. Our second case study is the Google Analytics Customs dimension, uh, custom Dimensions feature. So this is a feature that uh, allows site owners to define metrics to collect, which are not uh, collected by default by Google Analytics. So these metrics are going to be encoded in one of the CDX parameters uh, with X being a number that is uh, sent to Google. So frequently uh, we observe uh, one of the CDX parameters containing uh, uh, external cookies, which was set by other third parties. So the point we want to make here is that uh, this actually highlights uh, the abusive nature of external cookies. So here, instead of the site owners uh, using their own infrastructure to collect the cookies which are set on their website, they abuse a third party tool. And in doing so, they probably also violated policy agreements against uh, the entities whose cook uh, cookies are being sent to Google without their knowledge or consent. So in conclusion, uh, in this work, we have uh, proposed and implemented tools based on dynamic tent tracking to measure and understand uh, web tracking that is done uh, via external cookies. And then we found that our external cookies are already being widely used for tracking purposes and that they also facilitate information exchange uh, among third parties. 
So our hope is that uh, through this work, we have motivated the need for better privacy countermeasures in a browser, other than just uh, blocking third party cookies. Thank you for your attention. And I hope to see you in a Q&A session of the conference.